All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello all, it is our big Thursday show, even a bit bigger and different than normal. I mention it because we have Mark's Madness back on day two, and we've ironed out some of the day's uh, one uh, issues. Uh, There was really only one issue, there was a community issue. Uh, vote that was supposed to happen in our community section of our YouTube channel, and it did not happen because of a misunderstanding, apparently, Thanks, Tony. between Tony and Albert. Albert, thank you. Yes, so uh, Tony has now said he'll cover it. Albert, of course, is in Taiwan. Albert, thank you. He did send us a video from Taiwan of the bathroom that he's staying in. Uh, he's not staying in the bathroom. I was going to be about that. Yeah, exactly. What? Uh, it's uh, all he, he can afford with this Mark Thompson show salary. He uh, <laughs> double dips. Uh, so this is a, he's augmenting his already bloated salary with our uh, meager salary. But anyway, more to the point, he sent us a video. If we have time, we'll get to that. Many guests today, and they are prestigious guests. In fact, uh, the former White House correspondent, longtime senior national correspondent from ABC Television News, Jim Avila, will be here a bit later. Yeah, Jim's back, yes. He is, um, he's doing a special, has a special called 48 Hours on the Border. It really looks at what is obviously a significant issue in America around uh, the San Diego area where he is the lead investigative Guy, he's leading an investigative unit there for ABC television there in San Diego. But it's across the Scripps News Network, so his special will air across those stations, and he'll be here to talk about it. I put the link to his um, his special in the show description, so afterward you can click on that and watch it if you're interested. And I'm telling you, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Oh, cool. Kim, very, how are you? Very good. Uh, I am also looking forward to talking to Vincent Patterson again today. Yeah. He of Madonna and Michael Jackson choreography fame. Mm-hmm. You know, I just came back from the Michael, the, uh, the, well, Michael Jackson's in her show. I mean, there's a cool mashup that they do toward the end of the show between Billie Jean and, uh, like a virgin, but it's the Madonna mm-hmm. show, of course. And I loved it, but I have a lot of questions about choreographing a show like that and putting a show like that together uh, you know you know i like the how to uh, i love process and learning about process and a number of things but the reason vincent patterson is going to be here is because he feels that the oscars completely ignore choreography and historically choreographers are ignored by these various award shows and he wants to say a word about that which is kind of interesting while he's saying that I want to point out that they've added an award with the Oscars. Again, Oscars, a celebration of film, the celebration of those who make contributions in film, entertainment. They've added a category that I think may be completely ridiculous. What is that? And and, and I'm really all for recognizing people. But when you look at the way business is done in Hollywood, the addition of this one category, and I'll get to it later in the show. Is it best agent? <laughs> almost. Oh, really? Almost. <laughs> um, I'll get to it, and okay. I will share with you. And if I, uh, Tony, will you remind me? If Kim doesn't remember, remind me. And Kim, will you remind me? But I have a backup reminder in Tony. Thanks, Tony. If you don't remember, Kim. Okay, uh-huh. but please remind me because it well, is. You just, you have, don't you have any stickums in the studio there? Just use a little stick it note. Why? Are you busy doing something else, Kim? Kim how are you? Are you uh, maybe preparing for the next show? Is that what you're up it's to now? It's possible. All just right. Saying. I am um, just saying it what? Would, that that just all you have to do is remind me. Uh, I'm going to send you some post notes. Also, let me just note. Mike Binder will be here, the uh, comedian, director, writer. He is um, such a brilliant creator, uh, screenwriter, stand-up. I mean, he was doing stand-up on national television, I think, when he was 17. Yeah. Um, 
And he just completed, I guess, recently a, it's a documentary series. I think it's five parts called The Comedy Store. You can find it, I believe, on HBO Max and, uh, or whatever they call it now, Max. Anyway, so uh, that's a, that's a rundown on uh, who is on the show and what we are doing a little bit. Now, I do want to say. The Mark Thompson Show. Uh, do we have the winners of Mark's Madness from yesterday, Tony? No? No. Uh, we, you, yeah. Do you have them? Thanks, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have, what was, um, God, I can't wait till Albert's best because he's the commissioner and I can't believe the commissioner of Mark's Madness is not here. Yeah. <sighs> Poor Tony, we just dropped this on him. He's never done it before. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's... Yesterday I mean, we had it, good day, sir. And you know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they right. do it for. What was that, Tony? Go ahead. What, what is it? Sorry, can't hear me. Um, uh, yesterday we had good day, sir, against process and protocols in the first hour. Yes, and which one? Uh, well, good day, sir. At least in, in chat voting, it destroyed it 70-30. 70-30. Well, okay, chat voting, but also the other voting, right? Well, again, we didn't have the community tab up. I checked. I basically ran through comments and just yeah. tallied from comments and keep good talking day, sir, yeah that's destroyed. right that's good you good day sir completely comments. destroyed mm. good. All, right. all right and then what was the second one was uh sign our sucker and we'll do it live and what and one which... there well that one might have to be a controversy we might have to do something about that because oh, controversy in... oh my God. <laughs> throwing the flag here's the thing in chat voting i mean in in the in the you know during live voting during sure. during the show uh, uh was it uh who won my God, is it Cyan Arsic one, right? Oh my God, I can't believe this. You know they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. Albert, you have a lot of nerve Whoever going is producing away. this thing has no idea what they're doing. Can we just edit out the first ten minutes of the show and before yeah, and then yeah. drop it? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll take care of it. Uh, so, but in chat voting, uh, we'll do it live. Definitely one in 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 comments. Oh, that is controversial. We'll do it live. Uh, I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. That is. Oh, so we'll do it live. One in comments, but but, but Sayonara one in live. Sayonara live one in the live. Sayonara sucker. So that tally is ongoing. Is that what you're telling me? I think it's going to be an. The tally show is ongoing. Decision. I'm going to rule. Okay. That the tally is ongoing. I don't want any. There's no more voting. But the counting must, we must, I demand a recount. It's very exciting, actually. This, uh, all of a sudden, I become extraordinarily interested. And uh, now I want to get into today. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's, Mark's Madness. Mark's Madness, I'm excited. Guys, this puts a couple of favorites up against each other. You'll vote for either this Ch-ch-chip. or... But that doesn't mean that it's a good thing. That's right. Either chit 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 or. But that doesn't mean that it's a good it's thing. It's Dr. Phil versus Kim. I'm oh. loving it. You vote now and until midnight tonight in the community section. Wow. This is really cool. So even as we continue to count from yesterday, there's nothing wrong with the count going on longer, Tony. Right. I think I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Um. But uh, these two will begin now. Now, do we have the vote set up in the chat now, Tony, please? Chit, chit, chit versus Dr. Phil. It doesn't. Okay, of course, that's set up. You can vote now live. Most of you don't listen or watch the show live, which is fine. That's the whole idea. That's what one of the cool things about this platform. You're able to vote in the comment section. We will call the comment section for the vote and in the community section, mm-hmm. you go to our YouTube channel. There is a part of the unit, the channel. One says live, one says shorts, one says videos, and one says community. Under community, there'll be a place to vote. Chit 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 versus Doctor Phil. Good thing. I. But that doesn't hmm. mean that it's a good thing. Yeah, versus uh, it's tough to. Uh, Tough to pick up. I think I'm the most honest human being, perhaps, that God ever created. Yeah, well, you're still not going to be doing the count, sir. That's, uh, we appreciate it. But. The Mark Thompson Show. Katie Britt, everybody's favorite Republican response spokesperson, the Alabama no. senator who came on after Joe Biden's State of the Union message. She's doubling down. That's the, 
that's the move now, Kim. You know, you double down. You never don't apologize, never back down. Exactly. Mm-mm. I mean, could have just come on with a my bad, I'm sorry, but no. No. She wants to make it clear it's the bad, evil Democrats who she says don't do enough fact checking. Wait you a know, minute. Yeah. What? <laughs> In her tip, right. Someone who had all the facts wrong is saying the Democrats didn't do enough fact checking. My bad. Mm. I'm sorry. In I her mean, tele- she's yeah. the one who st- who stood up there, or rather sat down there at her kitchen and opened her flabby lips. She could have said anything. Well, I, I, again, I don't have, like the flabby she, lips thing. I don't she like had the, the opportunity. Like that, but, the flabby lips were going. Uh, no, she I don't, had the opportunity uh, to say whatever it was she wanted to the uh, American people, and yeah. she chose something that was untrue to blame on President Biden. And it was she was wrong, and she should have been a better person, and she should say she's sorry. Well, uh, now you should be- It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Try to, now, if you could fill in a couple of details when you say that she uh, uh, related something that wasn't true. She was relating, essentially, a story of a, uh, a trafficked woman from 20 years ago, right? It right. happened 20 years ago. Uh, she was suggesting, though, in fact, very strongly suggesting that it happened under Joe Biden's watch, right? And it happened under the former Bush administration. Right. Uh, she makes the point in her response, well, it's the liberal media, of course, that misses her broader point about the tragedy of human trafficking on the U.S.-Mexico border. Of course, it wasn't that point she was making. The point was that all of this was going on under the current administration. So she says, quote, they're interested in burying the truth about Joe Biden and his border crisis. The liberal media isn't interested in the truth. When all the facts come out, people will see the truth. She said that in a podcast interview hosted by GOP Senator Ted Cruz, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So Uh, it's the media's fault that she misspoke? Or that she included a story that she tried to blame on someone whose fault it was not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She. It's I the mean, liberal I, media. Woohoo! No, it's your fault. Katie, yeah. Brit. Yeah. Well, I, um, uh, it, it was obviously a mistake, and in hindsight, I wouldn't have done it. That's Ted Cruz after the uh, Mexico trip. Uh, like, let's get out. The, let's get out of here. Mexico trip. It's cold. Let's get out of here. Hey, look, we don't have school. Let's get out of here. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that's the latest uh, on uh, Katie. She is uh, doubling down, and she says, in your face, you libs. The Mark Thompson Show. In the meantime, uh, Aaron Rodgers, apparently in a conversation with a CNN correspondent, brought up, this is about, this is about a decade ago, as it turns out, but an early conversation, I say early, meaning it, you know, it's not contemporary this is about 10 years ago, he brought up the fact that he thinks the the Sandy Hook massacre, which is just a, a brutal, horrifying page in the American history of gun violence, Aaron Rodgers brought up the fact to the CNN correspondent that he thought it was a government, a bit of government theater. He essentially suggests that it's it's not real. Uh, that puts him in a pretty rarefied group of uh, conspiracy theorists. But S- who is the uh, the the guy that was sued the the talk show host that was saying Sandy Hook wasn't real? Alex Jones. Alex Jones. So he's an yeah. Alex Jones guy. Is what, That's what, what I'm saying. It's a pretty uh, yeah. it's an elite group. Yeah. Um, the essential point that he makes is that Sandy Hook never happened. Okay. Uh, But now, because he's being considered, supposedly, for the RFK Jr. number two slot, he's on the short list, supposedly. Again, this is in a New York Times leaked story earlier this week. Uh, He's denying it. And uh, he's trying to essentially suggest that this car this conversation never happened uh, it was around the Kentucky Derby in 2013 and the CNN correspondent was introduced to Aaron Rodgers and her, her name is Pamela Brown by the way and 
Apparently, Rogers immediately began attacking the news media for covering up important stories, among them Sandy Hook, and brought up the tragic killing of these 20 children and six adults by this gunman at Sandy Hook Elementary School, claiming it was actually a government inside job and that the media was Mm -hmm. intentionally ignoring it. He's a conspiracy theorist, Lulu. The... Uh, the reality is, I think that, uh, Rogers realizes now that he, uh, I would hope it's beginning to dawn on him that, you know, you are really elevated to another level of scrutiny when you are running for office and this kind of stuff in this environment is going to surface, you know, the internet, your posts, your remarks, your interviews, they are combed for anything like this. And so now he is realizing this and kind of waffling. He apparently is open to being vice president. And as I said yesterday, you know, I have nothing against an athlete ascending into any kind of position of power in politics if they are well-informed and they make good judgments and may have some administrative abilities. I don't see any of those things in Aaron Rodgers. Hey, Jack Kemp was a star quarterback. He was the Western New York senator and he was i mean he was a republican i'm sure we disagree on a lot of things but he was he was solid as a, an administrator anyway my point is i don't have anything against a, you know just because you, you don't have to come up through politics to be eligible to ascend into high positions in politics but in this case i think this guy's just you know he's deep at sea so uh but that's the latest on him and so i think there's more to come with aaron Rodgers, and i don't think um uh, he he should have concentrated on being the host of Jeopardy. Remember when he wanted to be the host of Jeopardy? He was on the the list of people who were in there doing Jeopardy. He wasn't bad, I thought. Um, but I don't think um, when it comes to public policy and areas of politics that he may have to weigh in on, it seems to me like he might be in deep space. So. The Mark Thompson Show. Speaking of athletes who may move on to positions of authority... In politics, how about Steph Curry, everybody? Yeah. He is hinting at a future in politics. Um, why is this doing this, Tony? Tony I doesn't can't know what you mean. It. I mean, how many times I I, 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 I I subscribe to the Chronicle. I subscribe to oh, all of no. these different. Um, pay here. Oh my God! I'm just. You hitting a paywall? I, oh, I'm already no. a subscriber. Hang on a second. Sorry, everybody. It happens. Somebody sent things. something in the comments. Comments like, "Why does Mark get so agitated about whatever?" Uh, I work so hard on this show. I work. I really do. I mean, it's a big project to get this show launched. We yeah. were at KJO Radio. I come over here. I'm looking at every little thing. So yeah, every little thing bothers me because I'm so invested in it. If I weren't invested in it, then it would be like you know, I've got, I've got it here. Steph Curry is uh, contemplating a potential entry into politics. He's even hinting at a possible presidential run. During an interview. Curry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. President Curry for three points. Let's go. There's never been anything like this. Yeah. When he was asked um, about entering politics and making a run for the White House after retiring from basketball, Steph Curry, who turns 36 today, said... Maybe. I have an interest in leveraging every part of my influence for good in the way that I can. I'm not going to say the presidency, but if politics is a way that you can create meaningful change or if there's another way outside of politics, I'm open to it. He conceded that he's not entirely ruling out the idea of ruling for president, running for president. But he said not anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Uh he seems committed, Steph Curry does, to really positive change, doesn't he? He really yeah, does. And, yeah. yeah. He wrote a kid's book called um, I Am Extraordinary. And it's a book that he's hoping helps kids find their inner confidence. So he's all about the positive and helping people be their very, very best. Well, if that's true, he has no place in American <laughs> politics. I mean, I, and this is their new hope. Yes, exactly. Good luck, Steph Curry. I mean, uh, the Mark Thompson Show. Meanwhile, uh, Don Lemon and Elon Musk had a very quick date 
and break up. It was uh, all over in like a day. Elon Musk had made a deal with Don Lemon, the former CNN host, for a show that Lemon would have on X, formerly Twitter, right? And uh, apparently, in sitting down with Don Lemon and talking to Don Lemon and being asked some, to Don Lemon's credit, pretty tough questions about drug use, Elon Musk scrubbed the whole thing. Elon Musk publicly encouraged me to join X with a new show saying I would have his full support, Don Lemon said. Lemon said that he pressed Musk about the rise in hate speech on X since the billionaire took over the social media platform last year, asking him if he believed that he and the company had a responsibility to moderate hateful con content. I don't have to answer questions from reporters, Don, said Elon Musk. The only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Otherwise, I would not do this interview. Lemon also asked Musk about a recent meeting he held with former President Donald Trump. Musk and Trump, as you know, met in Palm Beach with donors for Donald Trump. We reported that out here. Remember, I could told you that, you know, with a one wave of the pen, essentially, Elon Musk could make all of Donald Trump's debt go away. I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by. That's it, Musk said. And he said Trump did most of the talking. So the Saudi Arabia pays cash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lemon also brought up Musk's open use of the drug ketamine, asking the SpaceX founder if he believed it posed a problem for his government security clearance. Musk, Lemon said, answered no, because he has a prescription for ketamine. Well, after things finished, Lemon said in his statement on social media that he's going to release this interview, even though it will not be released on X, although Lemon says it will be released on X. There have been conflicting uh, messages on that. If it's released on X, we can know that the algorithm for its release will be played down. Right, Tony? They can just essentially bury it. I mean, that's how that stuff works, I think. Even as they talk about free speech, I mean, mm -hmm. Musk claims to be a free speech absolutist, as you know. But the reality is that he will likely bury this interview. And he, one thing is for sure, buried the deal that he had with Don Lemon. The Don Lemon Show is welcome to publish its content on X without censorship, as we believe in providing a platform for creators to scale their work and connect with new communities, said the X people in an official statement. But like any enterprise, we reserve the right to make decisions about our business partnerships. And after careful consideration, X decided not to enter into a commercial partnership with the show. Uh, I'm just saying these free speech absolutists, you know, when the free speech swings around to them, it's kind of a different deal. Uh, in any case, that's uh, the latest on Don Lemon and Elon Musk. Uh, Musk, who's very relevant because he is one of the richest men in the world. And frankly, richest men in the world type people, they are relevant all the time to public policy and to the culture. So. The Mark Thompson Show. It still seems like X is a losing pop proposition from the standpoint of business. But having been... Uh, acquired for monies that uh, it doesn't seem to justify and the valuation of the company just isn't what the... Uh, do you know how Elon Musk refers to his th his three wives? X1, X2, and X3. <laughs> very, very good. That's nice. You can reach us in the uh, in the comments section, in the chat. We'll try to... You'll, you'll ride herd over those chats, Kim, as best you can, meaning share them with us. Yes. I'm re reinstating Kim, the guy who you... Um, who you banned, I think. Kim, how are you? I, I, I yeah. I, okay. I'm reinstating him. Uh, he, he jumped on uh, our PayPal. Mm -hmm. He uh, made a contribution. He said, I think there's been a misunderstanding here. I never intended any kind of... Uh, there's no misunderstanding. No? Well, he yeah. bought his way back on everybody. That's okay. what I understand. Yeah. Um, well, he can be nice or else he's going to be banned again. Yeah, because if you yeah. come on here and you're rude and you're, you, you don't make this a place of kindness, then you're yeah. out. Wow. 
See, Sayonara, you sucker. That's wow, you are a... Uh, uh, you're very, Sayonara, mm, sucker. You're very, very tall. Good day, sir. All right. Jeez, sell yeah, down. I got the idea. Tolerate people who come on the internet just to be mean. That's not what this is about. Again, he... Well, to hear him tell it, it's not quite... Uh, Tony, I also have something from uh, the... Uh, can I say mailbag, Tony? They, they don't have the mailbags anymore. You kids with the digital, you know. I've received like a lot of positive bag. letters. Uh, I think I this is the, the digital the mailbag. Is, uh, transcended, yeah. <laughs> yes, the digital mailbag is uh, at the Mark Thompson Show at gmail.com. And Enid writes, where can I find John Rothman's interviews? I've looked all over YouTube, on your channel, over your videos, and I can't find them. Enid. Why are you yelling? What is the answer, Tony? Aren't Rothman's interviews right up there where she can find them? Yes, give me one second. I'll show you. I think Enid, they're right there. I don't know where you're looking, but they're looking. If you look under videos, you'll see John Rothman. So um, there's Luis, that. Luis, look at that. Chit, 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 crushing it. This is from Luis. A big shout out. This is for big a shout out. super chat. Chit, 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 crushing it. He says, if chit, chit, chit doesn't win at all, the commission must be impeached for rigging it. <laughs> <laughs> We won't let Albert steal this one. LOL, go chit, chit, chit. And chit, 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 chit. is crushing Dr. Mm. Phil good thing right now. Again, yeah. we are in the middle of Mark's Madness. You'll vote right now live if you're watching for either chit, 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 chit or it doesn't. But that doesn't mean that, that it's, it's a, a good thing. Dr. Phil, so chit, 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 or Dr. Phil good thing. Right now, chit, chit, chit is Winning. We'll have two more next hour. This is Mark's Madness. We'll continue through March. Jim Slayton, screw your freedoms. In my Arch and Arnold Schwarzenegger accent, he uh, throws us a, uh, a big, big shout out. Five spot. Thank you, Jim. And Mark? I don't know what happened to screw your freedoms. We had it, you know, when, I, when the um, drop machine went down. I think I may have. Um, I might have lost the Screw Your Freedoms. I don't know. I think that I'll find it. I'm sure it's still in there, but um, it, it is one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Kim's news, and then we have a guest, do we not? Yeah, we do. All yeah, right. We have Vincent Patterson standing by. Loving Vincent Patterson. Can't wait to talk to him. I just came off the Madonna show, and I was thinking of him the whole time because it's the most elaborate choreography, and he, of course, choreographer for... Michael Jackson for Madonna, but he has walked into controversy. Controversy about the awards and the lack of an award for choreographers. Uh, we will get to that. Smash the like button like a boss. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards. All right, let's get right to it, because we know that Donald Trump is back in a courtroom. The former president and his attorneys are at a Florida fed the Florida federal courthouse arguing the case for his handling of classified documents. They want this case dismissed. Trump's criminal trial related to alleged hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels is set to begin on March 25th in New York. So that's the latest there. Mm. Meanwhile, the Senate what Majority a surprise Leader, that he wants those uh, charges dismissed. Yeah. Many, so that's that's a well, real. What they're saying, uh, at least one analyst on MSNBC was saying this morning that the judge in this case, Eileen Cannon, is actually indicating there's some thought that she could just dismiss this case outright. Oh my uh, god! Throw and it she out. A, she's a total mm -hmm. trumper, so might happen. I mean, you don't, you know, uh, wouldn't that be weird? Because it seems like there's so much evidence in this case, but yeah. Well, if you mean photos of all the <laughs> top secret military documents in the bathroom, ballroom, bedroom. Shower, you know. Yeah, closet. It is. Interesting. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer harshly criticizing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and calling for Israel to hold elections for a new government. The highest ranking Jewish lawmaker in the United States is defending Israel's right to eliminate Hamas, but also accusing Netanyahu of being too willing to tolerate civilian deaths in Gaza. Schumer says he wants a two-state solution and referred uh, to Netanyahu as well as Hamas, radical right-wing Israelis, and the Palestinian president as major obstacles in this. 
There is a former Trump administration official who wants to buy TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who is now uh, building an investor group to acquire the popular video app from ByteDance, a Chinese company. That's because the House on Wednesday voted to approve a bill that would force the uh, Chinese company, ByteDance, to sell this app or have this app banned in the United States. You could look at this as a money grab. Mm. Mnuchin is a, look at him. I think they called him the foreclosure king or the, uh, I believe it was the foreclosure king or something along those lines. Um, he has benefited and sucked dry so many parts of the economy that were in a way of just pure opportunism. That was yeah. That was what the mortgage foreclosures and his last predatory move was it was some years ago might have been 10 years ago but you remember when everybody was going broke maybe it was 08 uh he moved in in such a big big way and essentially bought up all of those uh, mortgages and properties um it, it was clearly predatory it was legal but it was predatory but that's the kind of guy he is and in this case you've got a, this is very controversial by the way to this TikTok thing uh, i want to have a longer conversation about it but it's going to be a long hard climb to actually ban TikTok or even to edge out bite dance but that said now you see look at this this opportunistic guy Mnuchin who wants to move in he was the uh, secretary of the treasury under Trump and he was uh he fit right into that rogues gallery of appointments that Trump made so to be continued I mean, you see an opportunity with a successful company and business. I guess why wouldn't you just jump in, sweep in, and try to get it? But it's a forced sale. Do you see yes, that? It that's is. the that's what yeah. makes the opportunity even more uh, disgusting. It's like you're. Um, it's the way they. I mean, uh, I don't need to give you an, a parallel. You understand it. Yeah. I don't need to give you a historical parallel. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. It's all disgusting, Kim. <laughs> this is a picture of a hammer because I didn't want to highlight any one store. But sales at home improvement stores are leading the way as spending at retailers went up in February. The Commerce Department says retail sales went up 0.6% last month after more than 1% decline in January. While retail sales were up, gas prices also rose. But again, sales at home improvement stores are leading the way. In the Southern California area, we've got some high, high winds, and that is causing uh, power issues all over California. Trees losing limbs, power lines suffering during this major windstorm. Mid-morning, Los Angeles County had the most power outages in the state with more than 18,000 customers in the dark. Overall, SoCal Edison and LA Water and Power combined report 25,000 outages. Some planned, most unplanned though, due to the storm damage. In PG and uh, Northern California, PG&E reports only 4,000 planned outages, about seven. 7,000 unplanned. We've got high wind warnings and advisories in place through this afternoon. There's a 37-year-old Antioch man accused of robbing banks from San Jose to Modesto. And police in San Jose are now identifying the serial bank robbery suspect as Brandon Lopez. His alleged getaway driver identified as 43-year-old Tamara Bush, also of Antioch. Police say Lopez used a handwritten note to pull off the alleged bank heist. The note told bank tellers, I need all the money in both your drawers. Be quick. No games. What wow. I said. Not messing around. Mm-mm. Sadly, I don't know if you've been following the Eagles, not the uh, music group, but the Eagles in the live cam that had three eggs, a little clutch of eggs. So and there's sad. a live cam and everyone's kind of waiting to find out what's oh, going to happen with the eggs. Oh. Yeah. Tens of thousands of people watching on the webcam daily, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to welcome these three eaglets into the world. The team behind the webcam says it's now unlikely that Jackie and Shadow's three eggs will hatch, saying they they have no way of knowing why this happened. Uh, they think it might be environmental, maybe too cold up there. Our humidity percentages could be an issue. Oxygen levels at high altitudes. It could be biological, but that they think is not the case because Jackie and Shadow have already had two sets of eaglets successfully together in 2019 and 2022. This set of eggs just for whatever reason wasn't viable. So kind no. of sad. We're all waiting for this, hoping for a good outcome, but it's not to be. 
Yeah. Mm. This report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. You can get your exclusive Mark Thompson show 10% off at Tenuta by calling them and saying, smash it with your iron rod. Yeah. 925-699-4576, the number. You can get your wine shipped directly to your house. Just arrives on your porch, and it is a great Friday night. So check in with Tenuta <laughs> Vineyards. I'm telling you that Mark Thompson, Why Are You Yelling Red, is my new favorite. Oh Not a gosh. new favorite, but it's my newest favorite wine. So, yes, Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Smash it with your iron rod. I come from regular stock. Screw your freedom. There's a reason that this place is fun. Don't ever use that word. Why are you yelling? What are the porn stars doing, Mark? They pay me a lot of money for having attitude. What you say is the political dogma that they're trying to shove down our throats. You want to have like that? Yeah, that's no problem. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Quattro Panos Mas. I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. Say what? Do you have a secret talent? My bad. I'm sorry. You get nothing. It's fantastic. Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. It was great. I loved it. All the time. Bye bye. Did you really just do that? Right on, everybody. Great to have everybody here. We have a guest waiting. We appreciate everyone being... Oh, I need to uh, probably do that. All right. So um, uh, great to have everybody here. We have a guest waiting, and I will get right to him. Uh, just to tell you, though, that we are in the middle of uh, Mark's Madness, and Mark's Madness is something that is very important on this show. So just now, to review... I can't I Mark's Madness. The first hour, and there'll be two others in the second hour. The first hour, you'll vote. And you vote for either chit 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 or the Dr. Phil. But drop. that doesn't mean that it's a good thing. Okay, so either you vote for that or you vote for Dr. Phil. But that doesn't mean that it's a good thing. You can vote live in the chat. You can see chit 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 is crushing right now. And good luck, everybody. The other way you vote, of course, is in the comments and in the community section of our show, which uh, will be up through the entire um, Mark's Madness process. And each day we will have four drops, two in the first hour, two in the second hour. Now he's waited patiently. Let's get to him. He's a the Mark Thompson show. Distinguished choreographer. Uh, I loved his book, the book he wrote about being choreographer and sort of his ascendance in this world. Um, is a window on the, there it is, icons and instincts uh, on choreographing complex numbers for various icons using his instincts. Here he is, Vincent Patterson. And you know, Vincent, you really, you were a fan favorite when you visited when the book was first coming out. And uh, you've got great stories about meeting Michael Jackson and Madonna and and all of these luminaries that you've worked with. I was at the Madonna show the other night, and I was thinking of you. Uh, and I and and I want to get to your really uh, passionate stand on choreographers and the lack of recognition for them in the awards world. And I want to get to it in a second. But I want to tell you that I was thinking of you the other night at Madonna because 
the choreography was the whole show. I mean, she's got to nail these numbers, and it's very challenging, I'm sure, to sing, even if you're in and out of lip syncing, whatever, and still hit your various dance moves that are part of a theatricality, right? A story that she's telling uh, throughout that show. My question for you is, at least my starter question, is how do you just start with a blank canvas and create these super complex numbers what do you draw from well uh i didn't choreograph this this concert which i thought was fantastic by the way and bravo to madonna 65 years old and she was all over that stage all night long i have to say i was blown away at her energy just incredible you know on the other hand i wonder like why i i guess it's ego why she keeps doing these things you know again and again and again but i want to say before I answer that question, I love the fact that she brought three of her kids into the show. I thought that was so moving and so fantastic, and they were all wonderful. The piano solo was incredible, you know. Unreal, yeah. Her, her clearly one of her kids is a something of a virtuoso on the piano. Just fantastic. These kids from Malawi who she's adopted. Bravo for her, you know. Uh, well, you know, it depends. Um, when I created the Blonde Ambition tour, which was the one I did for her, which changed. That was the that was the best one. Thank you. God damn yeah. it. That was the best one. I swear it was. We changed the face of pop concerts with that one. But, you know, she brought me in late on that one. And I had 21 days to create 18 pieces and one week of uh, pre, uh, pre-production. It was insane. But, you know, I think on these tours now, which she called this a celebration tour, I think she had an idea of what she wanted to do. She wanted to present to the world kind of her life, her career from beginning to where she is right now. And the fun thing for me, Mark, was that I almost felt like it was a celebration of her and my career together because there was so much stuff from the Blonde Ambition tour, including the the girl on the bed. Uh, oh, that's Evita that I did with her. There were scenes from Evita. There were scenes from Academy Awards. There were scenes from the Pepsi commercial, scenes from Express Yourself, and so much stuff from the Blonde Ambition tour. I was honored that she did that and, and really, really moved. She sent me some great tickets. And, uh, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that show, but bravo to her seriously. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, let's go to the blonde ambition tour, because as you say, the, in this case, there was sort of a strategy to begin with, which is to take her through her. And by the way, it doesn't just apply to Madonna. I've always been curious about this, but Madonna shows are, have such great choreographic complexity. And that's why I'm so glad we're talking to you. So, uh, I get it. The cake was almost baked when you were brought in. You had to do. You had to very work very very quickly. But uh, it just uh, maybe this is such a layman's question that it's just uh, it's almost like impossible to answer. But I'm just blown away at the synchronicity and the intricate nature of the choreography while it's also telling a story. And I'm just wondering. You know, I you know a chorus line kind of pulled back the um, or you think you can dance that show kind of pulls back the curtain a little bit on you know uh, one two three step wave or whatever it is. But I mean, you've got to turn that into a real show. I'm just curious if you could give us a little more on how you do that. Do you sit down like a art like an architect would over a you know a drafting table? Well, first you listen to the music. First you sit down in a tour situation like this. You sit down with Madonna and decide what songs are, what's the song list? What are we going to do? What order is it going to be presented in? Then we decide what kind of dancers do we want to have to fulfill these these, uh, pieces, each one being specific to the song itself and each one being a little bit different. That's from the Blonde Ambition Tour. That was uh, Keep It Together at the end. Um, and then basically you sit with Madonna and you kind of say, okay, these are some ideas I have. And what about this? I mean, I'm going to jump back to the blonde ambition tour again, but I remember like with like a virgin, she had an idea of doing it as a heavy duty, slow rock and roll thing, like a Patty Smith kind of Patty Smythe kind of piece. Right. And I had this idea of doing it as a middle Eastern world piece with her masturbating on a bed with two eunuchs up there. With <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's a give and take and, uh, you know, but you work with her together like that and you both come up with what you're going to do. Then most likely what happens is you as the choreographer. Yeah, that was the piece I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. The choreographer, you you work with the dancers first and you kind of teach them everything and you work with them while Madonna's out, 
you know, working with the band, practicing her songs, doing all that stuff, keeping herself in shape. She comes in and joins the group and, and then she starts to learn the choreography. She puts in her two cents, rightly so, and lets you know if this she likes it or if she doesn't. Could you change this? This is comfortable for me. This is not. And then it's weeks and weeks and weeks of rehearsal. And um, I'm telling you, I was blown away at these kids. These kids were brilliant in this show. My God, they did everything. They could do everything from gymnastics to to ballet, to, to, to hip hop. Although I like that we didn't see too much hip hop in this show. It was really much more sophisticated movement and celebration. And I was really proud of that, you know. It but, was, uh, I, th- I mean, you summarized it, of course, perfectly. I mean, it, I, I don't... I don't share your last comment about it, which was or when you were kind of summarizing it, going, why does she do it still? Um, I don't know what you mean by that, because she's still able to hit the ball, right, Vincent Patterson? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, she blew me away. I, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't seen her live in a, in a while. And she truly, she she owned that stage. And she brought it all the way. And as you say, it's a long show late at night, doesn't finish till one in the morning. One in the morning. And you know what I loved about this show, too? She really spoke intimately to everybody. I mean, she it she really spoke from the heart. And that really moved me, you know, and, you know, talking about her kids, talking about her beginning, talking about her past. And I, I was blown away. I, I thought that the most beautiful section when she was giving paying tribute to her dear friends who had died of AIDS. Oh, that was so moving, man. Oh, that was so moving. Survivor guilt you know and yeah yeah i was um in san francisco uh working uh in san francisco at the nbc station there uh in the 80s when when aids was the scourge of the and we were losing our friends it was uh, positively awful uh i but but and i guess what i'm trying to say is those same emotions uh, some of them uh, connections to those emotions i felt during that that number it was really powerful yeah Yeah, i agree Uh, um all right now i want to talk to you about um Look, you have this body of work, and we've discussed it, and people should go back and watch the video when you first came on the show uh, all about your book, which is just really worth reading. It's a great read, great yeah. stories. So it's interesting. I look at the Oscars and a lot of these award shows as both ridiculous because you can't compare art and also important because they celebrate good work. Yes. And your point I understand, and I'm so glad we get to hear it from you, is that choreography has been something of a, an orphan to a lot of these award shows. Not a lot of the award shows, specifically the Oscars. I okay. mean, the Emmys give uh, an award for best choreography, and on Broadway, the Tonys give an Emmy. Uh, give an- well, on, on broad, the Tonys you know are going yeah. to, but the, but the SAG Awards, you guys are not in that, are you? No, SAG Awards don't, People's Choice Awards don't. But Golden are- Globes? I mean, come on. To say the Tonys and the Emmys and the Oscars. Okay. Now, the the sad thing about it is that the you know all they've ever done years and years ago in the '30s, choreographers did get awards, but they also the Directors Guild decided they were called dance directors, and what happened was Director Guild decided they didn't want anybody else to have any kind of title that had director in it, so that ceased immediately, and along with that cease the tribute to choreographers. Now, a few choreographers over the years have received some awards. Gene Kelly received them. Jerome Robbins from West Side Story back in the day, he received an award. But these are only called honorary Oscars. Never a a, a yearly annual award happens. The last person to receive one was 27 years ago, and that was Michael Kidd, who did so many, so many musicals. And he didn't even receive it for a specific film. He received it for his body of work. But that was 27 years ago. The last one before that was a woman named Ona White in 1969 for Oliver, 55 years ago. Now, when you think of the, the films, I mean, not only just this year, but when everything from La La Land, Grease, Saturday Night Fever, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Footloose, Flashdance, I mean, on and on and on. None of these films have ever been awarded a, a, an honorary Academy Award for the choreographer. It's ever. interesting. And we get the we get the comment that, you know, how many movies have choreography? You, you know, you so speak to that. So let me tell you, this is the thing. There's a lot of ignorance about what choreographers do. Choreographers don't just create a big dance. They can create a moment in a piece they can create 
staging for somebody. They can create character for somebody. They can teach somebody how to move uh, in a specific way if it's a period piece. Um, so it's not just like if you look at the color purple this year, you see choreography from one end, one extreme to the other. Fatima Robinson did a fantastic job. One of the first shots, you're coming down that lane and there's two girls sitting up in a tree doing hand jive kind of thing. That's choreography. People don't realize this. Um, jump into a crazy thing in Express Yourself video. I taught Madonna how to crawl across the floor like a cat before she spilled what milk down her face. That's choreography. It's not just making a big dance number happen, you know, like like we saw Ken on, um, you know. Uh, on, on the, the Oscars, Oscars, yeah. But let me just give you a, a list of, the, of some of the, some of the films this year that had choreography. So you have The Color Purple, Poor Things, Barbie, Saltburn, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Magic Mike's Last Dance, Guardian of the Galaxy 3, Are You There? It's Me, Margaret, Wonka, The Marvels, Trolls 3, Asteroid City, Megan, and if you want to go into the documentary world, you've got Taylor Swift's Era Tour and you've got Beyonce's Renaissance Tour. Now, those are just a handful of things that I put together quickly. There is choreography in so many films. So, you know, this, this argument that there's not, not enough movies to have uh, a choreography award is just not acceptable. I wouldn't argue against it, but I would tell you that you've just explained something to us that I wasn't aware of. I mean, I might have been roughly aware of it. When you say it, it makes sense. But it seems to me you need a special skill to discern the choreography and to evaluate the choreography. So if you're going to be giving awards, it seems to me that the Academy, which you know is a bunch of BS, it's a bunch of, it's thousands of people who who, who look like me sitting around in t-shirts on the couch uh, watching movies. And then there are uh, maybe a thousand of them that are really taking it seriously and going to the theater and watching all the movies. But I, I'm just telling you, it's it's a pretty broad base. I'm guessing a lot of them, I'll go 80% of them don't know D about uh, choreography to the point that they could evaluate these things the way they need to be evaluated. You're absolutely right. And part of that is that there are only, as of last year, <laughs> first for about... 30 years, I've been the only choreographer in the Academy Award, in the in AMPAs. The only one out of last year, Fatima, who did uh, Color Purple, got in. Two of us out of 10,500 plus members. There you go. It's, and, and, and the only way that an Oscar, a new Oscar can happen is by starting um, a proposal made in your specific branch. Well, choreographers for the first time have been put into a branch, but they lumped us into a branch. And I'm trying to be positive about this because we've had some discussions with some people in membership. Uh, Meredith well, Vincent, when you use the words lumped into, it doesn't keep it positive. <laughs> well, okay, let me say we have been kindly put into a branch. <laughs> thank you. That's much, time. much. Thank you. That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. yeah. But, but... Meredith Shea and um, Meredith Shea and Natalie Wade, who work on a membership committee, have been in discussions with us now because we're really seriously pushing this. But what happens is we are into a branch called production and technology, which does not really typify or explain what we do. We are in there with colorists, script supervisors, producers, stunt coordinators, music supervisors. In order to get into the academy, you have to have two sponsors from your branch, has to be your branch, nominate you. The problem is all of these people, we don't work with them. We work with directors and, and, and actors and sometimes writers, sometimes costume directors, and also cinematographers, but we don't work with colorists. We don't work with script supervisors. So there are many, there's a woman, Mandy Moore. I mean, she choreographed the Academy this year. She did La La Land. She's done about 15 films, you know. Sure. She can't get in because she can't find any sponsors who feel that they know enough about her work to be able to sponsor her. So it's a catch 22 situation. Until we get more choreographers into the Academy, it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to make a proposal to the awards committee who then I has see. to make a proposal to the awards rule committee 
to then make a proposal to the directors, board of directors, it's, it's, it's a bit convoluted, but I understand the reason. I mean, they don't want to change rules. Well, they're, they're, they're trying to evolve. Uh, they are, like many institutions, slow to evolve. They are oh. trying to, I think, speed up that process. They're trying, you know, for uh, ethnic inclusion that they didn't really have yes. historically. And, and then they increase a category, which I promised everybody I would... Uh, I would mention it makes no sense to me. The stunt category does make sense. I think the idea that you reward these stunt people with some kind of recognition uh, is, and these stunt coordinators, is a really good idea. The thing that is a questionable uh, addition, just because we're talking and, you know, and we're both in the business, Vincent, if I can say that. <laughs> uh, I, um, I think it's ridiculous to have a casting uh a, a, a casting award. And, and here's why. You may say, well, what are you talking about, Mark? It's very important who gets cast in a movie. Well, can you show me of the top 10 nominated films, the actors who were cast who weren't just offered the parts? Right. I mean, I, I understand that they may have to read, just, but, but these are actors who were offered these parts. There's no casting associated. The, all of these people aren't unknowns. This isn't like an A&R person at a music company finding the next great breakthrough performer. These, and the other thing I'll just say is that casting is now done with videoing yourself with pages that they send you, the sides they call them. You video yourself and you send it off to a casting director. Then those, maybe they're a hundred, maybe they're several hundred are called and producers and directors go through them and they make a choice. But that's generally not for a lead. That's for other supporting performers in a project. So the casting, they're like, so you get an award for what? For packaging all those videos and sending them out to the producer and director? It's absurd. I, I don't get it. Absolutely. Well, look, I mean, you know, awards are kind of crazy anyway, because as you said at the beginning, and as someone said on the Academy, everybody there shouldn't be really awards. I mean, everybody's equal. Every, you're you're all working together on whatever project, whatever film you're working on to make the best product you possibly can. So to say one is better than the other, it's so personal. And truly, it's, it's voted on by a handful of people. You know, uh, everybody can vote. Not everybody does vote. But it's not like it's voted on like, you know, from everybody in the United States or something like that, or everybody who's seen the movie, like the People's Choice Awards. So I don't really have a pro. I mean, I have a little bit of a problem that casting directors have been offered the Academy Award before choreographers. Before Thank you. I thought that might yeah, rub you the wrong well, way. We are on the set, you know, I mean, this. Sure. Uh, uh, let me just explain a little bit more about what choreographers do. I only have another minute, but yeah, thank you. Go ahead. I will. You, re you get a script and it says, and then they dance. That's it. <laughs> so you as a choreographer, you have to write, you have to write it. Then you have to choreograph it. Then you have to take that actor and you have to teach them. So you become a teacher. Then you have to kind of direct them. Here I am with Björk and, and Catherine Deneuve in, in Dancer in the Dark. Then you have to direct them because once you hand this to the director, he doesn't want to start from scratch. He never directs the, 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 the stars in, in the choreography. So we're writers, we're, we are directors, we are costume designers, we, we work with music. We do so much more and, and we're hands on all the time. And all I want to say is anybody who feels that choreographers should get an award, I would ask them to write to the Academy Award, AMPAs. And that is exactly 8949 Wilshire Boulevard. Bill Kramer is the CEO and Janet Yang is the president. They're both wonderful people, but the more they hear from the public, that wouldn't it be nice to have an award for choreography? Maybe then, Mark, something will change. And I just I it's, thank yeah. you for allowing me to talk about this on your show. No, Great. it's it's something Great. you 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 feel appropriately passionate about. Uh, you know, Vincent, you've made such a great. Um great contribution through the years. And I think that you, you make some very good points here. So uh, there you see it and uh, people can uh, join your effort. And sadly, the Oscars, very slow to make changes as we were saying before, but maybe something happens. Uh, meantime, your book, uh, good luck with it. And thanks so much with um, 
Uh, thanks so much for uh, for hanging out with us for a few minutes. There it is, Icons and Instincts, Vincent Patterson. Pick it up. It's a great read. You will not be disappointed. Thanks, Vince. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so the Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. Yeah. Uh, if you are curious about the state of comedy and uh, talk about politics and comedy and everything washing together in the world of Mike Binder, he is the writer-director who will join us in a few minutes. I also want to mention that if you're really into the hard-boiled realities at the southern border, stay with us for Jim Avila, who joins us, the award-winning journalist. He's won everything from the Peabody to Emmys to Murrow Awards. He was the longtime White House correspondent for ABC News. He joins us at the bottom of the next hour, uh, or the bottom of this hour, I guess. We're into the next hour already. Um, with this new configuration, Tony, I can't see when Mike gets here, so let me know, uh, if you would please, when, uh, when Mike arrives. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, update is the situation with Mark's madness in the first hour and the voting does continue, but not in the live chat. It will continue in the community section of this channel. Chit, chit, chit was going up against chit, uh, chit, chit. Uh, Dr. Phil, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's only a good thing. one can move on to the next okay. round. There can be only one. There can be only one. Um, God, you have the best voice. Well, thank you very much, Kim. Sorry, I don't like to compliment you because, you um, know. Yes, I know you don't like to compliment anybody. <laughs> you, You're very <laughs> tough. Very, very tough. That's, that is not true. It's uh, just God. you, specifically. I see. Well, I blame you. Okay, well, but I, uh, you seem uh, kind of on the tougher side. But uh, Kim, how are you? All right, now listen, let's not get... Uh, I want to uh, begin our two with the, the, you can see Chit Chit Chit's ahead 81%, Kim. Your drop is beating Dr. Phil good thing, which is good because I'm sick. I don't like that Dr. Phil drop. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I got a, an email before I get to the rest of Mark's Madness. Here it is. Oh, I love it. This is great. Here I've we, received a lot of positive letters. Yeah, you know, this isn't one of them. Um, oh, no. Mark, I'm a holdover from KGO. I listen every day. This is from Diane. I'm not in a position to send money, but when I, uh, when I, well, I, that's, it's okay. We appreciate you watching. Yeah, uh, I was just listening to you and Kim talk about her blocking a listener. And you mentioned that sometimes you take criticism too much to heart mm -hmm. and uh, mentioned like when someone says they don't like sm the smash it drop. I can't tell you how much I hate that drop. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. She doesn't like this drop. Smash it mm, with your iron rod. In fact, she says that, that um, I've almost quit the program over that drop several times. <gasps> really? Now that you've moved to YouTube and you use it for the like button, and then you have to say it to get the wine discount. You do, <laughs> yeah. It's just too much, Mark. Oh. It's so overused. Maybe during Mark's Madness, you could vote it off the show. Wow. She wants it off the show. Good day, sir. Yes. You're done. Smash it with your iron rod. Uh, I never thought I could hate a drop as much as smash it until I heard chit chit chit. Ch -ch oh, <laughs> Diane! <laughs> hate it. She writes it in capital letters. Hate it. Why are you yelling? Love the show. So she hates smash it with your iron rod, and she hates chit chit chit. Wow, wow it's a it's a tough world if you're Diane. <sighs> we can after Mark's madness. I will take a meeting on drops if you write in we could do a an online poll as to whether or not they should be eliminated completely but um yeah. i can't do it during mark's madness there's a certain sanctity to the process so we continue no. I can't believe it. mark's madness mark's madness this hour it is a showdown between this have you ever been a member of the chinese communist party and uh, that's not fake that's real. It's either... Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Or... That's not fake. That's real. It's the Communist... Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Versus Fauci. That's not fake. That's real. Yeah. Vote now in the comment section. 
Or you vote in the after hours commenting, which you can do in regular comments or in the community section. We encourage you to go to the community section of this channel. You'll be able to vote for have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party or that's not fake. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's always interesting in the early rounds. Unclear who might go on, but uh, everybody's bracket. We have almost 300 people participating and so it's quite the uh, quite the crew that's moving on. The Mark Thompson Show. So excited for this guy. Love his work. I've watched his movies. I've watched his stand-up, his documentary stuff. He does great uh, documentary series now. It's on Max, I believe, on the Comedy Store. And it's a walkthrough, especially for this audience, a walkthrough a lot of the comics and the foundational aspects of modern comedy and how comedy is changing. I, I'm making it sound much more clinical than it is. It's really kind of a fun ride, but it's also really interesting. And um, he just does such great stuff, funny and provocative. How about it for Mike Binder? All right. Yeah. Look at you, Mike Binder, huh? How are you, Mark? Yeah. I'm well, sir. I'm well. You, t uh, Kim, tell Mike, tell Mike what you said to me before we went on. I was reading about you last night, about your bio and the old Wikipedia. We read up on the guests, Mike, we on do. this show. We like to know yeah. who, you know, who's this. who. Yeah. And so you've yeah. been in movie after movie after movie. But what I thought was incredible is that many of the movies you've been in or directed, you've actually written. You're a very accomplished screenwriter. And that's huge. I mean, that's very difficult work. Very it kind of makes you wonder what I'm doing here. Right, exactly. <laughs> You're awesome. Wow. Well, thank you, Kim. Kim, that's very nice of you to say. And um, I mean, I'm really, I, the, the truth is, I'm really happy to be here. I, 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 um, I love Mark. He's a, he's a great guy, super talented. And, um, and uh, you know, listen, this is so much fun for me to see you, what you guys are doing. And, 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 and Mark was telling me about it. And, and I thought, you know, it's either that or get my nails done. <laughs> what? Uh, well, it, I, it's a photo finish, actually, maybe between those two things. I want to, uh, but speak to Kim's point. You are really prolific, Mike. And I think you not only uh, have written, you know, uh, screenplays and, and produced and directed these films. And by the way, speak for a moment. It's like not easy to do that. Not easy to write a movie. Then it's not easy to direct a movie. It's not easy. So I'm always impressed when someone like yourself does put a project together. And that's what it means. I mean, you have to put the project together. It's not enough just to, you, you can't just bake the cake. You have to put together all the ingredients of the cake. Everybody who's attached to the film, all the uh, aspects of financing the film. It, it's a pretty complex world that you've operated in for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. And Truthfully, it gets harder and harder all the time, you know. Yeah. But uh, has the has the technology helped or hurt? It seems like it might not be as expensive to do a movie today. Am I wrong about that? Well, it's it's not expensive to do some movies. You know, my mm. son, we produced a movie for my son that he did, which turned out really. Great for ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> I couldn't wow. believe how great, how great it looked—a full feature film. But you know, to actually make a movie for the studios now and everything, it it's still pretty expensive. Uh, the move, you know, I mean, I'm making a movie now for twenty-five million dollars. That's that's. I, I guess I guess it is cheaper than it would have been twenty years ago in dollars because everybody works. To, cheaper and, and better and it, it's it's hard to say it's just, it's really a good question because the technology on one hand helps a lot but on the other hand it just everybody expects everything to be done quicker and faster and and it it just kind of makes everything everyone not appreciate the, the artistry as much i think your documentary, you know, you've done scripted stuff. I loved um, a movie you did many years ago called The Sex Monster. I mean, I, I don't know that you could, 
it was it was born during the Howard Stern era. I think even the lead characters listening to Howard Stern sort of on the radio, like a shock jock talking about sex and stuff. And then this it's it's funny, it's provocative, it's everything. And you've done a lot of this stuff within your films. There's sort of like this provocative thing as well as as being really really funny. And now uh, documentary filmmaking. You did this thing on the Comedy Store. What a that was the really first documentary I'd ever done. Yeah, which is why I wanted to get to it. Yeah, so tell me about that. Well, you know, I started as a stand-up comic, and I, I um, at the comedy store, I was a doorman and a stand-up comic as just a kid at the comedy store, and and then I kind of moved away from that in my, in my late twenties, early thirties, when I started making films, and then um, they called me back. You know, I was on Mark Marin's podcast. The first time I'd ever heard of a podcast or listened to a podcast was hearing when Mark asked me to do that. And we talked a lot about the comedy store. And then a little while later, the owner of the comedy store and Mike and Mike Tolan, who's a great documentary producer and film director and producer, called me and asked me if I wanted to do a, a, a film about the comedy store. And I I immediately said yes, you know, because I, I just thought I, I, I knew all the stories. And, you know, I had been working on Ray Donovan at Showtime. And they had done that a, a series of a fictional series about the comedy store called uh, I'm Dying Up Here, based on a book that right. William Neal Sutter did that I was in. And it sure. was just. I just kind of knew that wasn't going to be great, you know, just fake stand-up comedy and fake stand. And when Showtime asked me to do this, I said, "This is the way to do it. Tell the real stories with the real old clips and the the real stories of how we, how Freddie died, Freddie Prinz, and Sam Kinison's life, and how Richard Pryor would come to the store." And that was it just would be so much more emotional and real. And, and that's really what it was. It, it just well, the, one like, of the most striking aspects of this, to me to interrupt, but just to say that those things that you've just talked about, the archival footage that you found was astounding. I mean, you found old bits of Leno and, and, and Pryor and, as you say, comedy store bits. I mean, this is, you know, this is before everybody had an iPhone and was recording everything. It was really impressive how you brought that 70s world of the comedy store to life. And the other thing, Mike, is for those of us who watched The Tonight Show and grew up with Tonight Show when late night television really was this launching pad and this great sort of incubation area for show business, uh, this comedy store world, it was clear to me, is was the feeder to that, right? I mean, that's where the scouts for these late night shows were. But at that time, it was the Carson show, I guess, the Tonight Show that was the big one. But there was there yeah. was work for comics outside the Tonight Show as well. Yeah, yeah, not a lot, but but it really, when I came out in like '77. It was the Tonight Show. You had to get on the Tonight Show, and you had to get at yeah. the, up at the Comedy Store, you know. Yeah. It, 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 or, or the Improv in New York, you know. But but when Johnny Carson moved out here, the whole industry came out here, and you know, I I was I was really lucky to be able to make that documentary. It was a really a blessing that I got to do that. And then there were years after the, the store went cold and the stand-up comedy went cold and then it got hot again with Joe Rogan and 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 Bill Burr and Whitney Cummings and Chris D'Elia and that whole world and Mark Marin and and that was more reportage for me which I was a new wave new world for me and I, I got to learn that so I was um I was very lucky you know and it it actually taught me about the whole under new wonder world of stand-up comedy, which is very similar to what this is. You know, all these guys have their own shows and their own podcasts and their own, and they don't, there's no gatekeepers anymore. They make their own specials and they put them up on YouTube and they put them up on their own sites and they're, and they, they sell huge concerts out and, and, you know, 
you know, I, uh, it, it sucked me back in, you know, I thought, God, I love stand up again, you know, cause it's so, yeah, you're free. performing again as a stand up. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I, I would say this, it's interesting just to kick it around for a second. Uh, it's such a stark contrast, as you say, the world today to the world of a few decades ago. Uh, the gatekeeper part of, there was a gatekeeper at the comedy store. You kind of go into that. Like you need to impress the comedy store gatekeeper first just to get on stage at the Crazy, comedy store. Yeah. Then you need to impress the gatekeeper at the Tonight Show to get onto the Tonight Show. And that's sort of then your career is, is that's the linchpin. But now no gatekeepers, you say, you can just throw it on up there, but much, much, much noisier. Like it's much harder to cut through all the noise. I mean, you can put up a show on YouTube or you can put up a show on whatever platform, but you need a push. You need a, you still need in a way, uh, there's a societal or cultural gatekeeper. You need a platform to spring load all that into the viewers. Otherwise you won't have viewership that will build a career, right? Um, I, I, in a way you're right, but in a way I also think, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think that, um, it's like everything, it, it, if you're just consistently good, you find your viewers, you know? It, it, it's like, how the hell are you finding your viewers? You're finding <laughs> your viewers because you're good and you're consistent and people are turn, tuning in. And that's the world we live in now, you know? I'll give you an example. There's this woman that I, I think is fantastic named Leanne Morgan okay and she's been around and it took her a while but she's been around and she was putting up her own clips on YouTube and then her own little special on YouTube and then another one and playing clubs and, both. and then she just built a following and she has a niche a niche is it a niche or a niche I've heard both. I always thought niche, but but yes, I like niche in a way because it's uh, um, it just sounds uh, like uh, elite. <laughs> yes, well, I, but I think I it's would always, yeah. I, I, I would go with what a guy like you thought something would okay. be. You know, yeah, I think it's okay. niche. So it's a niche. You just said you like niche. I do like niche, but I think it is niche. But I, uh, what can somebody just uh, uh, Mr. Binder wants to know, Kim? Google it. All right, figure it out. We'll let so you anyway, know before the end of this. This Leanne Morgan, Google Leanne Morgan. I mean, she's amazing, but she plays, she's got she's she plays right to her crowd, and she's so good. And then finally, Netflix just said, Hey, we want a special from you. And she took off. She's selling out theaters everywhere. But it's so so in a way, you're right. Because she she Netflix catapulted her out of the stratosphere, but it was before that she was still selling theaters. She she built up uh, uh, her own groundswell, and that's there's a guy named Matt Reif that's happened to. There's a really funny guy named Brad Upton who's seventy years old, who's just killing it. And so you so there. There is, there are no gatekeepers. There's, you have to just. the The difference now is, you got to be great. You got to be really funny, and you got to stay with it. You know, another guy who I just had on my podcast yesterday comes out next week is a guy named David Tell. Do you know David Tell? No, uh, he's been around for years. He's very funny. He's been around for years, but boy, he's just become. If you ask any comedian who their favorite comedian is, he's one of the five always. And he has got a new special he made himself that is so funny. It is so funny. And he made it himself, paid for it himself. He shot it at Cobbs up in San Francisco, which is my favorite comedy. I love that room. I, I, and our, I our audience, a lot of them are in San Francisco, yeah. I opened for Shane Gillis up there, one of my first clubs back on, out, out of town of L.A. after not doing I, I I took 28 years off and got back into <laughs> it a year and a half ago. And I, and with the first night out, I asked Shane, can I open for you? And and we played Cobbs. And uh, so I love that room. But Dave shot his special there. And then Netflix ended up buying it. Finished. 
And it's so good, Mark. It's the and he is He's so funny. He had a Comedy Central deal for a while. He had a series on Comedy Central. He's sort of that late night club comic, they, a profile anyway. Um, he's very, very funny. It's cool to hear of him. You know, it's funny. I lost track of him because I'm not in that scene the way you are, Mike. I remember the Comedy Central show, though I've, I've heard him on podcasts, though he's still very, very funny. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the Netflix special. I didn't even know about it. I guess, so oh, it's uh, was he- Hot Funds, it comes out on March 26th. Great, great, it I'll check so it out. Funny. What's the name of your podcast? Stand Up World. All right, Stand Up World, I wanna check it out. The last thing I wanna ask you is about the new it, blending. It, 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 you have to come over to my house and listen to it with with these one he set of headsets I have. So it's not a <laughs> it's just one it's best appreciated. Time. Yeah, well, I put the headsets on and, and I watch you listen to the special. Wow, well, well, that's weird. very very cool. There's never been anything like this. All right, um, so uh, Mike, the all of a sudden the infusion of politics there it seems to me like they're like a couple of comics you mentioned they don't do any politics that i that i know of in their act like leanne doesn't do i don't think maybe does she maybe she does i i, I don't know the stuff i've seen know. clips yeah. yeah 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 but some really love the co politics and lean into it and some don't you see the late night guys lean into politics for example and then you see others who go now i don't want to alienate a bunch of my audience i'm not into politics anyway so i just talk about other stuff uh is there a how do you uh, you know you do a i know you write about comedy you, you're kind of a student of comedy even as you've gone back to comedy how do you assess politics in that kind of comedy space now i think politics is a great thing to talk about if you want to make half the people in the world hate you <laughs> You know, if you, if, you, if you just don't like too many people liking you and, and you just want to go, this will cut off a big, big, huge bulk of it. Just piss off and I'll, I'll, t I'll pick one team and go with the rest. But and that's the pro that's why comics don't like, you know, in the old days, you know, Carson and even Leno could you could make jokes about both people and. And, and that's honestly, when I do politics, that's what I try to do. I, I have this joke that really works. I, I talk about, you know, how old everybody in government is. You know, you look at Nancy Pelosi and, and Trump and Biden and Mitch McConnell. I mean, that's not even a strong shuffleboard team. You know, <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. Yeah. And, and that was because but. That's the only thing to me you can do. I, I don't. I don't want to. You just people are out to have a good time. They're not sure. out. They're not out to even at, at a table of four that comes together. Three of them have one opinion and one of another. They don't want to hear it. They don't want. It's just become too polarizing. And and I, I I'm about making people laugh. You know. Sure. 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 Absolutely. Well, Mike, I'm looking forward to. Uh, Checking out the podcast and on niche or niche. Did we get the answer on that? Uh, Stand Up World is the name. There's a debate about how you're supposed to pronounce niche or niche. There are two common pronunciation variants, both of which are currently considered correct. Niche rhymes with sheesh and niche rhymes with pitch. So the more common one and the older of the two is niche. I will take my prize off the air, but uh, I think that is the kind of news you can use either is okay though mike but niche is the older stand up world stand up talk stand up news stand up history is his podcast he is uh he's so great i'm looking forward to the movie so you're working on it now when will that movie come oh, out? we start shooting in may so it, it comes mm -hmm. out in uh in, whenever in the yeah. year 2071 <laughs> right well, I'm looking forward to uh, getting my sides for the deep-voiced uh, anchor reporter that will definitely show up in the movie. Hot voice, sexy guy. <laughs> Thank who, you. Uh, drives the uh, Ferrari. And oh, well, I like it. Uh, now we're writing. I love it. All right. Yeah. Uh, hey, Mike. Hey, Mark. Thanks, man. So much fun. Show. Thank you, Kim. Thanks for all you. Thanks for everything. And um, if you know anyone up at Cobbs, throw in a good oh, word yeah. for me. So what is the, are you, do you have a cops date on the calendar? Cause a lot of our audience no, is in no, the cops no, neighborhood. No, I want to get one. I want to, that's okay. where I want, I, 
that's a, a bucket list. That's a goal of mine. I want to okay. Well, when we get uh, when we get a Cobb's date, and you will get one, you'll come back on and you'll promote it, and we'll uh, we'll show up in big numbers. Great, Mike Binder. Thanks, Mike. Great to see you. Thanks for having me on, pal. Yeah, a lot of fun, pal. Thank you. Bye, bye. The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. Yeah, I am uh, very interested in that pronunciation of niche and niche. I mean, that was kind of a... Um, uh... Niche. Also American, niche. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. If you're French, it's niche. If you're well, American, uh, it's that's niche. not quite true, though, Kim. I Maybe just, it's tomato, tomato. Both are it's, acceptable. It is. It's tomato, yeah. tomato. Both are. Yeah. We just we just covered that, but yeah. it is. Uh, I think it sounds a little. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, frou frou, hoity toity. To say uh, niche. Yeah, I mean that is the. But there's it's a fancy. word for that. It's um. High starts with a P. Pretentious? Uh, pretentious. Exactly the word I was looking for. Gosh, Tony, that's so impressive. Thanks, Tony. I think yeah. it depends on how you use the word, too. So I would say I found my niche, probably, but then I would say it's a niche market. Oh, would you? So it just mm. depends on how, the context of the word, maybe, perhaps. I see. Mm. I see. Well, uh, we like to educate. Um <laughs> And uh, we just did educate. I want to quickly educate on where things stand on the most significant thing happening in the culture in the month of March. And that is now, Mark's Madness. It's That's Not Fake against CCP. That's right. It's either That's Not Fake. That's real. Or Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? That's right. You vote for That's Not Fake. That's real. Or have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? I love that. You've never been a, ever been a member of the Communist Party, but that is losing to that's not fake. 72% to 28% vote live now and until midnight tonight in the community section of our channel. Yeah, wow. It's um, all my faves are going down. <laughs> there is an ongoing vote, I'll remind you, for what was up in the Mark's Madness offering yesterday. Tony is continuing an after-hours vote. It was cut off at midnight, but he is now combing through the comments to get a correct count because the community section wasn't up yesterday. Now it will be. So after the show airs, you go to the community section, you can vote there for, in this case, either the uh, Communist Party. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Uh, or the uh, That's Dutch. not fake. Right. That's real. Exactly. And uh, also, from the first hour, Chit 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 and Dr. Phil. But both those look like runaways. Mm -hmm. Looks like Fauci is going to crush Communist Party, and it looks like Chit 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 is going to crush Dr. Phil. So that is your latest on that. The Mark Thompson Show. I have Jim Avila. He's an award-winning journalist. He's coming up, and he's talking about the border. He has a special all about what's happening at the southern border. That will be... It's called 48 Hours on the Border, and it's going to be tonight at 9.30. It'll be right after our meetup. Now, we have a meetup tonight between 6.30 and 8.30. It's already closed out, and Avila, I think, will be part of that meetup, too. I mean, he, people are dropping in and out for 10, 15 minutes, and he'll be among them, I think. Uh, but in any case, we want to talk to him about this um, this uh, two-day series i'm just wondering uh, what should we do here though uh kim should we uh how do you want to handle this do you want to uh, let me let me whip through the news really yeah, really quickly you. i'll give you a yeah. little what kim how are you and right. then we'll get right to jim avalo no i love I, that plan i, I adore I and cannot wait to see i have missed this man i'm so glad he's back well there's no way to no need to lavish him with praise i oh, mean I'm i lavishing. just think, no i know you are and i don't know if i'm you know let but the I great will... lavishing begin yes no anyway I... no 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 exactly let's say uh, you know he did leave us after wow. being on the show uh because his abc station wasn't going to be happy that he was opining about politics mm. so i'm not i'm not quite as I'm not drunk on Avila the way I was. I get it. Award-winning journalist, White House correspondent, senior correspondent at ABC. I get it. 
I'm not suggesting he wasn't a great journalist and isn't still a great journalist. Mm -hmm. Murrow Awards, Peabody Awards, Emmy Awards, I get it. But what I'm saying is, when it comes to an award for loyalty... Why are you yelling? I'm just saying he may (laughs) not have... Okay. Uh, Kim's News, smash the like button if you would. Thumbs up helps us. And just because that lady who wrote into us, is it Diane? Was that her name? Yeah, Yeah, That is her name. She doesn't like it. Doesn't like smash it. So I won't play smash it. That's my concession to you, Diane. Wow. Usually when someone says they don't like something, you do it more. Albert would smash the crap out of it. Because he, when somebody writes that they don't like something, Albert just rides it. But without Albert here, we can... uh, continue without by the way right at the end of the show i will share the video from albert of his bathroom in taiwan it's a very special what i know it's a weird that was the weirdest tease i've ever done in broadcasting (laughs) smash the like button mark thompson show the mark thompson show On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Well, from Albert's bathroom to this bathroom. Look at that potty. Yeah, uh-huh. we remember that potty where all the boxes are piled up. Attorneys for Donald Trump argued today that the case over his handling of classified documents should be tossed right out of court. The former president's attorneys claim he is protected by the Presidential Records Act. Trump was at a federal courthouse in Fort Pierce, Florida, about 60 miles north of his Mar-a-Lago resort. So that's kind of convenient for him, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, speaking of Trump... He has officially posted bond now in his civil defamation case in New York. His lawyer, Alina Haba, filed the $91.63 million bond today after it was approved by a judge earlier this week. The bond protects Trump from attempts by writer E. Jean Carroll to collect the damages while the case makes its way through the appeals process. This case centered around statements Trump made in 2019 about assault allegations that Carroll made against Trump. In January, a juror jury ordered Trump to pay Carol $83.3 million in damages for the comments that he made and seems to be continue to making. So I don't know. The funniest thing about his lawyer, Alina Haba, is that she made comments, I think it was on Fox News Channel, about Fanny Willis. And she says, Fanny, Fanny Willis, whatever the hell she's calling herself. And I'm thinking... Your name is Alina Haba, and yeah. you're making fun of Fonnie Willis's name. First of all, it's really low rent to make right. fun of somebody's name. But yeah. secondly, it's not like your name is, you know, Jane Smith. Right. I mean, it's Alina Haba, and, you know, you wouldn't appreciate it if somebody said, well, Alina, Alina Haba, whatever she's calling herself. It was just the oddest thing. The, the Trump crew, even his attorneys, are low rent. Just unreal. You know who's not low rent? Kamala Kamala Harris, vice president, speaking out against lawmakers who have rolled back abortion access across the country. Harris toured a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minneapolis today, becoming the first vice president to ever visit a clinic providing abortion services while in office. The vice president said many women across the country are suffering following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And we know abortion has become a key issue running up to this general election. President Biden, in his State of the Union address, vowed to restore abortion protections if he is reelected and Democrats take both chambers of Congress in November. Matt Gates. He is being served a subpoena for deposition in a civil lawsuit involving allegations of sexual relations with a 17-year-old girl. That, according to ABC News, attorneys representing the woman who's now in her 20s issued the uh, Gates the subpoena. She was at the center of a years-long investigation by the Justice Department into allegations about this Republican lawmaker. Meanwhile, pressure is now building on House Speaker Mike Johnson to put a sweeping national security package on the floor for a vote. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell warned today withholding critical weapons for Ukraine has only emboldened Russian President Vladimir Putin. And he said it's time for the House to take up the Senate uh, passed bill and finish the job. 
Alaska losing a big part of its humpback whale population. A recent study by the National Park Service's Whale Monitoring Program revealed a 20% decline over the last 10 years. Almost 7,000 North Pacific humpbacks vanished between 2012 and 2021, according to that study. Research say climate change is part of the problem. Yeah, so sad. Best Buy recalling more than 287,000 air fryers over fire, burn, and laceration risks. The retailer recalling the models of the Insignia air fryers and Insignia air fryer ovens after they say they received 24 reports of overheating, melting, or glass shattering, including oh God. multiple complaints of the air catch uh, fryers catching fire. Products oh sold. my god I know. it's my bad yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> i don't think they're supposed to do that i don't the, think my bad i'm yeah. sorry is going to get it done i don't think that's going to cover it the products yeah. were sold in canada and the united states miraculously no injuries have been reported but that's the way it is um well Wow. I offer yeah. this sincere apology to you today. <laughs> I think that is closer to what you'll need to, to do. I'm, uh, no context will suffice. No, no context to will the suffice. Hurt yeah. And anguish there is caused hurt. Burn by and my words. glass explosion is no. all I'm saying. Yeah. Usually I like to end it on a, um, a happy upper. note. Yeah. So how about a stolen right. shipment of bobbleheads? Jada heads. had nothing to do with it. I'm so, yeah. Okay, enough with the drops. What was the... What was the, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins say a shipment yeah. of bobbleheads was stolen after it arrived in California, because oh. of course it was. That's not fake. That's real. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> the shipment was carrying Yagamir Yager bobbleheads. Well. They were going to be given to fans at their game against the San Jose Sharks tonight. The team wow. said the bobbleheads will now be given at a later date Oh, no. Somebody stole the first shipment. <laughs> that is... This is no picnic. No summer camp. Yeah, apparently not. Penguins Got say the investigation is ongoing. Yeah. Step up the security around the peg the penguins. Mm, they, you know, I'm just saying, you send it to California, all bets are off. Nobody knows what's going to happen to it. Wow. Yeah, this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. The place to get your tea, the place to get your coffee, your espresso. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a real treat for you. Coachella Valley Speaking Coffee. Right now, oh, my friend. Oh, and the red cup today. Mm, I mm -hmm. like how you. Yeah, that's fancy. We took the red cup. We put a sticker, which you yeah. can get in the merch store. And we put it on there, and it's uh, it, it's great. I yeah. like the black. The black's the classic. We also have it in white behind me. Oh, it's so Pretty good. Nice. You can get your 10% off by entering Mark T all together at checkout at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for being here. We uh, changed things up a little bit, did some politics off the top of the show, then we did some kind of entertainment stuff toward the middle, and now back to an issue that is very much in the news and has been successfully pitched as sort of the issue that America faces. It's certainly, if not, uh, I don't know if I agree that it's the issue, but it's certainly one of the issues. And uh, it's prominent in the minds of many Americans and many voters. So it's politically relevant as well as being uh, societally relevant. And that's the problem at the border, the southern border, uh, porous, and it continues to be beset by all kinds of issues. The story there is so multifaceted that it has to be told in that way. And tonight, a respected journalist, friend of the show, Jim Avila, the former White House correspondent, the Murrow Award winning and uh, Emmy Award winning, Peabody Award winning correspondent, does a 48 hours on the border show. It's, a, it's the end of a two day series. And it will be aired across the Scripps network of stations. I'll ask him exactly where we might be able to see it. But he is the senior investigative reporter now at KGTV, the Scripps owned ABC station in. San Diego. How about it for our pal Jim Avila, everybody? Wow, look at you. You were barely at this station, and you've already come up with what looks to be like a pretty hefty piece of journalism. What is this 48 Hours on the Border about? Well, first of all, it is on a niche network. but Oh, uh, very well done. Very well done. I just want to say that uh, calling me disloyal is a little unfair. There was a bidding war. And, uh, Mark brought out at about... What? Of the bidding war. Uh, 
<laughs> it's pretty look, tough to compete to, against zero. Yes, but, I uh, uh, look. I will do that. I I felt that uh, just the uh, prestigious nature of your appearances here on the show would be payment enough. But clearly, I was uh, mistaken. Uh, right, but so, so you went for the paycheck, and you're at. But you're one of the reasons you went down to this particular station is because they would let you do this kind of work. Yes, they they really do. It's not your regular local news. And uh, they're owned by Scripps News, which has its own network as well, uh, which you can find on the Internet. Some some cables have it. Uh, but if you just put it, type in on your computer, ScrippsNews.com, you will get to it. And it has it's like a CNN. It has 24 hours of news. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And you can also uh, download an app, Scripps News app, and you can watch it anytime. So that's. That's that marketing part of it. Uh, it is a little hard to find, but, uh, you know, not really. It just isn't as well known. You just need uh, to know it. Yeah, you just need to know where to look. Okay. Right. So 48 hours on the border. We took we sent dozens of reporters from our state. That, so Scripps owns, like, it's the second largest station owner group in the country. So they own lots of stations. And what they've done is send out, they have border. They own stations along the border: Texas, Arizona, California, San Diego, Phoenix, Tucson, uh, some stations in Texas, and they sent out dozens of reporting teams for 48 hours of coverage on the border. What it's a snapshot of what it's like on the border during a 48-hour period. They're running those stories uh, on those stations, and then I put together uh, and anchoring a hosting a, a program that will run tonight on the Scripps network. So that's those are the sort of mechanics of what's going on. What it's about is, um, you know, it's it's mostly a non-political, except for, of course, my part, uh, um, look at what's going on at the border. Uh, I do a piece, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that's beautiful about um, this network and, and what I do at the ABC San Diego place is that, they're not limited to time. They're not small pieces. I'm doing a six minute piece tonight on the failures of immigration reform and the fact that in Congress, they have had um, decades of failure of trying to reform the immigration system so it's broken. We have the experts who say to me, our system is broken. People, you know, when I get so angry when people tell me all the time, Oh, I'm not against immigrants. I just want them to come here legally. It's impossible to come here legally. Okay, it, it takes 20 years. Uh, your relatives will die by the time they get here legally. Uh, so, and that's because the system is broken. There's an asylum line that takes up to 20 years to go through the, through the judicial system. Um, if you're not coming for asylum, it's even longer. You know, it's it's. It really is an embarrassment. And what has happened is uh, since George H.W. Uh, Bush, way back when, there have been attempts to reform the immigration uh, system. And every time the conservatives in Congress shoot it down uh, because it's comprehensive and it also has what they call amnesty, but what most of us call a pathway to citizenship. And that include and, and this last one that got shot down, Mark, didn't even have a pathway to citizenship. And it still got shot down because of Trump's whims. Right. I, what it had, the last one, is an increase in the number of immigration judges. So the idea would be that those in the pipeline would be handled in a more expeditious manner, right? Yes. And they also were going to have a system where, you know, I think it would have been challenged in the courts because it's not the law. But the, their system was you would have to go to a port of entry to claim asylum Rather than now, all you have to do is step foot in our country and you can claim asylum. Uh, so uh, that th those are the things we look at in, in my report. But we also have, you know, there's a great story uh, from my colleague in San Diego about the number of head injuries that have gone way up in San Diego from people falling off that damn wall. So they use ladders to, you know, on the other side to get over. But then when they get up on top, there's not a ladder on the other side. And uh, they're falling down and they're, and they're, you know, really hurting themselves in their desperation to get here. 
you know, this is a desperate situation. So, and to that point, it's not as though, I mean, I'm sure there are those who go, yeah, that's the idea that people are going to get hurt. And so that's, they should, they're not going to do it. But what you suggest with the word desperation is not really, they're going to climb the wall and then they're going to take their chances on the drop from the wall and, and see how it goes. Yeah. There's a lot of people who make it that way, but there's a lot of people who don't. And, uh, so it's, you know, it's, you know, they get the, by the time they get there, they're so, uh, hungry and tired and it's been a, you know, an arduous trip. Uh, so we have a piece on that. Um, there, there's a, a piece on what it's like when, when they actually get to the border, when they actually get to the wall, how, you know, how they're taken care of. And there are, there are in California, at least, not so much in Texas, uh, but in California, there are uh, Good Samaritan groups who meet them on the other side of the wall, this side of the wall, who provide them with water, provide them with food, um, provide them with instructions on what's next for them. Uh, the other problem that we have is a system called catch and release. But be because there are, there's no room in the detention centers here, there's no room in the processing centers, what the Border Patrol is doing is, is picking them up, taking them to the processing center, and then putting them on buses into downtown San Diego or to other places. And then they're, they have, you know, they have relatives here most of the time, and they they get tickets uh, and they fly into the country. And then they're supposed to uh, go to their asylum hearings or their hearings in the city where they're at, uh, when, in the, in wherever they're at around the country. Some do, some don't. Some just disappear into the fabric of the country. Um, so the, the whole system is, is, you know, it's just a mess. And, it, you know, we blame it on and we demonize these people. Uh, I, I have a great interview in my piece with an immigration judge who's been a veteran immigration judge. And she says flat out that, you know, people have been lied to. She uses that word, lied to. We've demonized these people. Uh, you know, studies show, I, I use a recent Stanford study that shows that, uh, that immigrants commit 30% fewer crimes uh, than do uh, the native born population uh, in the United States. And that, and, and another study by the Labor Department just came out, which shows that they improve the economy, and that much of our rebound here uh, after COVID has, has been fueled by immigrants uh, that have come across and are filling uh, jobs that weren't weren't being filled, and were, and because the jobs weren't being filled, the inflation was jumping high, uh, and now it's kind of calmed down a little bit, and a lot of that is because of of uh, immigrant labor. So well, there's no question, Jim, that just on that last point, yeah. the unspoken fact is that our economy is driven. There's a huge gray market that's driven. I'm talking about in restaurants, in construction, yeah. in, in maintenance, et cetera, by these people who are undocumented. Yeah, and they work very hard. There's a story that's not on this special, but if you get a chance, uh, go to the... ABC 10 website in San Diego. Um, and there's a story that I did about my family, um, you know, my immigrant family, the Avila family, who came across in 1925. Uh, my grandfather and grandmother, dirt poor. They had, they had my grandfather's, my grandmother's relatives had been in uh, the revolution. My grand, two uncles rode, rode with Pancho Villa. Uh, they, their ranches, when they, when they lost, the ranch was taken away. They had no money. They came, they met in a border town. My grandparents came across. And in one generation, one generation, my uncles and my aunts, my uncle, one uncle, a doctor, another, the other three uncles, uh, there are four men, the other three uncles owned all their businesses here in Orange County. Uh, one of them owned a body shop, one of them owned uh, a car dealership, another, you know, th these were enterprising people. The second generation is my generation. So we have journalists. We have uh, 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 my aunt, uh, my cousin is a, is a dentist. My other cousin, a female, is a director in Hollywood. You know, this is the immigrant story. This is the real immigrant story. And my grandparents came over in 1925 when there wasn't a border patrol and there wasn't all these fences and everything else. They just walked. They just drove across. You know, and, and set up shop here, got their green cards and went to work. So there's, you know, 
this country is an immigrant country, and we forget that. Uh, so if you have a chance, watch that, because my story, my family story is not, is not unusual. This is the story here. Yeah. No, yeah, that's not, great. That's thanks, Tony. That's terrific. It, it is not the. Uh, that, this yeah. is my cousin who's a director in, in Hollywood. Uh, that's my grandfather as a young man in 1925, uh, getting ready to come over. So, you know, and so now, Jim, with the with the, the reality and you're there close to the border and you've been now to the border and done a lot of reporting from the border. It is a much different situation, and you would concede, I think, that the issues involving immigration, and by the way, it's not just in this country, the uh, climate change and uh, economic um, uh, desperation has driven a lot of migration all across the planet. But here, we have an unwieldy situation unlike that which you've talked about in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Is that not true? You would. I mean, it hasn't. When I say unwieldy, maybe let me let me let me put a finer point on it. Don't you think those border communities have been uh, affected in ways that many residents uh, are uh, not disposed to to greet immigrants with open arms? Or do you think that's more uh, I think it's, you know, racism? I think political. San Diego yeah. greets them with more certainly more open arms than does Governor Abbott in Texas. In Texas, in okay. Um, and in fact. One of the things I point out in uh, in my stories is that three of the ten safest cities in the country are San Diego, El Paso, Texas, and McAllen, Texas, right on the border. These these people are not coming across to commit crimes; sure. they're coming across to work. So, is it frightening sometimes for people to see people who don't look like them? In large numbers, yes, it is. But it's no in no way is it an invasion. What there needs to be is a systematic way of processing them. We had Ellis Island. You know, there were huge surges in the past. There were, you know, I point out in my pieces that there in the twenties, uh, you know, the uh, it was the it was the Italians uh, in the turn of the century it was the Irish who came across in huge numbers and they were vilified, uh, and the Jews in the thirties came came here in, in large numbers. And they were vilified. So it's not just, you know, and nowadays, today, when I went to the border the other day uh, and, and saw the, and saw the uh, Border Patrol loading these folks up in buses, uh, these were not uh, Latin Americans anymore. You know, what we're seeing now are uh, a lot of Africans, um, a, a lot of Middle Easterns, Middle Easterners. And the Chinese are, they, on their TikTok app, they have actual instructions coming across and how, where to, where is there a border opening? Because there are holes in the fence. Where, where to go across, uh, what to do when you get across, and, and they're all instructed to go right to the border tro patrol and claim asylum. They don't run away into the country. They sure. go to the border patrol to get processed so they can begin this, whatever system there is there. So... What what has happened is is that the you know right wing media uh, has shown these pictures and made people fear. And there are the occasional crimes. You know the, this crime in Georgia, terrible crime in Georgia, where this woman was killed by someone who was who was uh, uh, a recent immigrant and was arrested and let go. There are those things that happen, but to emphasize those and not at the same time give context that this is rare, that this is not what most of the immigrants are doing, that in fact less than 30, that, that more, uh, that 30 percent less crime is committed by, by immigrants is not fair and is terrible journalism. What do we expect from Fox? But that, the, I mean, Fox is the one who used that picture of immigrants allegedly coming across the border when it was a picture of someplace in, in, uh, uh, Aleppo of people uh, running away. They use that as a picture claiming that that was uh, uh, immigrants at the border. So, you know, you can't trust them at all. But what yeah. they've done is they, with a large pop segment of our population, they have successfully demonized immigrants. And it's really a shame because of the history of immigration. Here. They've sold a lot of lies uh, without question. Yeah. Um, they've sold a lot of lies. Uh, 
I'm looking forward to seeing this. 48 Hours on the Border. You can find it at uh, scriptsnews.com. There's also a Scripps News app, and you can grab that too. 48 Hours on the Border, though. Uh, what is it really like on the U.S.-Mexico border? Solutions. I love that you talk to an immigration judge. I, I, I'm very intrigued by this, and I can't wait to uh, talk to you more. I think you're, you know, you're so now hip deep in this story, among others, and you'll bring that that great Avila reporting to it. So great to see you again, Jim. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on this piece Thanks, and man. on this show. Yeah. And I'll see you tonight. I'll be Yeah, tonight, to tonight in the uh, in the meetup. Avila will be here. Kim, do you want to say goodbye to your boyfriend as he moves oh, his yeah. Jim Avila. Yeah. I miss yeah. you. Jim, how are you? Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you tonight. I'm so excited about this uh, 48 hours on the border piece that you've done. I was watching it last night and it's really excellent. Obviously you did it, so it's going to be, um, but it's really, really good. And it looks like you're having success in San Diego. Yeah. It's uh, like I say, it's a different kind of local news. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the quote unquote senior investigative reporter, I get to choose my stories. Nice. I did a series on marijuana dangers uh, for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm doing this series. My next series is on concussions and in, in teenagers. Oh, wow. So they're stories that I'm interested in. And I think that they're valuable. And it's not the local car crash. <laughs> Are we still working on them to let you come back on the Mark Thompson show on a regular basis? Uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll fix that. Okay, good because we need wow. more Jim. Just have to be careful on the political, on the yeah. political. Uh, yeah, because I'm no longer a commentator; I'm now a reporter now, again. So back I can't into the journalism doing... zone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Good to see you, Jim. Good, good to see, see you, Jim Avila. Jim Avila, everybody. See you tonight, Jim. Hey, which one do you use, Mark Thompson? Who's Mark Thompson? Thank you for being here. Thank you for smashing the like button. You know, you hit that thumbs up. It helps us in the algorithms. And here is your update. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's, Mark's Madness. Madness. It is a showdown between my favorite, which is getting crushed right now. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? I love that drop, but it is losing right now to Fauci. That's not fake. That's real. Again, you vote right now. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? The Chinese Communist Party or... That's uh, not fake. That's real. Yeah, CCP member is Have you ever been a member of the Chinese right. Communist and, Party? Uh, that's not fake. That's not that's fake real. is the other. And good luck. Now we are wrapping up, so I will just mention to you that... Your voting still is important. Most people watch this show after it's ended live, and so you are important. You can vote in the community section of our channel. Again, you go to YouTube, where many of you are watching videos or shorts or et cetera, and one title says community. Under community, you'll find this. Here it is. Tony will show you now. Tony, in a very... High risk operation live on the internet now. Thanks, Tony. He goes to our channel, and you can see all of the different um, uh, parts of the channel there. You barely can see them because they're but you tiny see, font. Can, so you could see home video shorts, but playlist community under community. There's the voting right now. There for both. for both. I liked it. Thank you. Very good. We'll have that for you every you day. Mm -hmm. As Mark's man, the commissioner of Mark's Madness is Albert. Now, he is in Taiwan. Um, I didn't approve this trip. People do things on this show without my approval. I, I do not understand it. I really don't. I mean, I break my ass to make the show happen. Whoever and is then, producing this yeah, thing then the has no idea what, what they're then doing. Then the producer and commissioner just goes on vacation while we're kicking off Mark's Madness. Do you know who I am? I, I, they, I'm kind of a big They deal. don't know who I am. But he did send back this piece of video I don't understand why he wants us to see this, Kim, but he feels his bathroom is particularly noteworthy in okay. this hotel. And Tony will share it with us now. Go ahead, Tony. In three, two. All right, best parts of traveling in Asia are the epic bathrooms and the hotels. Let's start with the bidet. Um, when I went oh. to Korea last year, that bidet reached parts of me. That I never thought could be reached, so I'm looking forward to reviewing that. I just <laughs> what? And this is water pressure is. I don't even know if I can even call it water pressure. I felt assaulted in there, and then we got the bathtub with the window for you freaks out there. It's kind of hot with the window. It seems very unnecessary, but 
I'm, is that a light? I'll have to find out. And yeah, look at a nice little sink. And this is uh, pretty cool. Taiwan. He's yeah. like his muscle there. His, you see that at yeah, the end? Yeah, he looks, yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a stud. He's a, he he's a, yeah, he really is. Pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, super sticker from Aiden Perez Marufo. $20 super sticker. Come Big on. Big shout out. Big shout out to Aiden. Or is it a Don? It might be a Don Perez Marufo. Yeah. A Don, I'm going to say it is. And I will give you another big shout out. Big shout out. Because I blew your name the first time. <laughs> yes. Thank you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are a crowdfunded show. I really haven't mentioned all the ways you can support us, but you know, Patreon and PayPal, probably mm -hmm. the best ways. And you can find links to both under this video and most of our videos. You will find links to PayPal and Patreon. That community is so very important in supporting us. Tony, you're updating the list at the end of the show that runs with the Patreon and PayPal names. Yes. Once a month. I got a, um, an email from someone saying that his name is still not there. I'll push it oh, on no. to you. Yeah, okay. because usually Tony's, pretty, usually Tony's pretty good about it. So yeah. Um, yeah. I just go with what the data that's in front of me. So if it gets I know, I'm not to blaming you. There's no up, formal sorry. investigation, yeah. sir. You have nothing to account for. Thanks, Tony. I heard blame. I, uh, I okay. well, I, I blame you. Okay, Kim. I mean, you are really <laughs> tough, Kim. I know that that's, uh, I, I mean, I do everything right. And they, I did everything right. And they indicted me. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, Mark's madness continues tomorrow. Our Friday show. I will tell you that tomorrow is a classic showdown. Things get a little rougher. Producers, get, producer, no idea. Producer has no idea what he's in, right? Goes up against going back to Texas. Oh, yeah. that's hard. That is hard. And that's in the first hour. And then regular stock. Clarence Thomas goes up against which one of you is Mark Thompson. It's going to be a good day tomorrow. That's right. Spread the word. Share our videos. Share this channel. Thank you for helping to build our footprint. Now. The After Party Live is going down we'll do right now right over on the we'll After Party live. live channel. It's Kim and John Daly, both of whom will be in the meetup tonight. See everybody in the meetup at 6.30 Pacific. And I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Thompson oh, Show. Bye-bye. Until tomorrow, everybody else, thank you for I'm all time. the ways bye, you support bye. us. Bye-bye.